Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for an oxygen not included tutorial. A lot of people have asked me to do a tutorial on how to cool things down using steam turbines and aqua tuners. So what I'm gonna show you today is an easy design with just one aqua tuner and then I'm also gonna show you a more complicated design where you daisy chain a couple of aqua tuners to get a quicker cooling. I'm also going to show you two or three applications and what you actually have to take into consideration when building these things. To build the first design I always recommend you to do the outlines, have a water lock and then pump out the entirety of the thing. So everything is vacuum and you have a clean slate. I'm not going to explain too much on how to build this in survival mode. I'm sure you can figure this out yourself. This tutorial is about something else, namely aqua tuners. Now, I highly recommend you to only build these designs once you have access to steel. However, it is sometimes possible with gold amalgam, for instance, but I don't recommend you to go for these designs first. Just shoot for your refineries, get your steel and then build those aqua tuner steam turbine setups. The aqua tuner of course is cooling down any liquid that goes through it by exactly 14 degrees. So we're gonna make that to our advantage. The next thing we're gonna need is in the plumbing section a liquid pipe thermosensor. We wanna have that thermosensor right here in front of the aqua tuner where it's gonna have its input slot. So if we have a look at that again this is the input slot and there would be the output slot. You can press O in order to change that should your design require it. We're also going to need some automation wire. You can take lead or anything for that matter since our goal is going to be to keep the steam below 200 degrees. Another thing that I recommend you is to take your main wattage in order to power these aqua tuners. They take 1200 watts so only one transformer wouldn't get you far. And since the steam room has all of this heat that we don't want to escape, what we are going to do is a little trick. We're going to take two join plates and combine them in a way such as this. I also want to connect them like so. And then if we close this off and already had a vacuum here, this is also going to be a vacuum. So heat accumulating in the steam room is now not going to be able to transfer it all the way to the outside. It's only going to be able to heat up the join plate and from there it cannot go anywhere else. In terms of plumbing, we first have to have a hot liquid, of course, that we want to cool down. So let's just imagine this is coming from the right side here. We want to take insulated pipe and igneous rock. Usually there's plenty of that around. So this is going to be our input hot water, uh, you know, depending on how much cooling you need. And we want to input that into the sensor. After the sensor, we need to go directly into the input. So the sensor actually gives the signal for that exact packet that went through it. If the liquid is hotter than we decided for the sensor, it is going to go through the aqua tuner being cooled down by 14 degrees and then we want it to go back wherever we need it. However, should the sensor detect the liquid is already cool enough, it is going to bypass the aqua tuner and we have to make sure we do that with a bridge. So we want a bridge over here, so something like that. And the reason we want to do that is so the water from the exit pipe of the aqua tuner is not going back into the aqua tuner without even checking the sensor. And that is something that happens. You have to have this bridge. From there it's pretty much free game. This is going to be our output. So hot water in, cold water out or liquid. Of course we don't want to forget to hook up the aqua tuner and then we can basically shut this off already. Now there's going to be one piece missing that I already know we're going to need and that is a liquid vent from the steam water that's coming out of the steam turbine. We're going to have that bad boy right here and that should be fine. Maybe uh, two pipes to get things finished. And then the next thing you would want to do is drop a little bit of water on the floor. Now, 200 kilograms are more than enough. I actually recommend you to have at least 20 kilograms of steam in there. So if we check this, this is only five tiles. So five times 20 would be 100 kilograms and then another 100 kilograms for the top tiles, which equals 200 kilograms. So all you would want to do is put a bottle empty there and drop 200 kilograms of water. Now since I'm in creative mode I can do that directly. 200 kilograms and that would be dropped right there and looking like so. We are then done with the aqua tuner room. We are gonna close this off and we're gonna place the steam turbine on top of it. Now actually before you do that you once again want to drop a bottle emptier and then choose a liquid for your cooling. I usually choose petroleum in order to prevent overheating the steam turbines, but you have to choose yourself. So I'm just gonna drop like 100 kilograms of petroleum here and we are also gonna drop a steam turbine 
This can be made out of any materials, steam turbines all have an overheat temperature of 100 degrees. We then want to go ahead, set up another heavy watt joint plate and of course also hook this up to our main power system so the steam turbine can feed some power back to our main system. And I think I'm just gonna represent our main system with a battery right there. Of course you want to finish the piping for the steam turbine itself. The turbine basically takes the steam from the bottom floor, converts it into power and water. The water is gonna exit here at 95 degrees and it's being dropped back directly into the steam room. At the moment there's one fatal flaw in this contraption, namely the steam turbine is eventually gonna overheat. We have to take care of that. Now depending on what you cool down, you can directly take advantage of that liquid. So instead of going over, I'm gonna take a little detour here and we're gonna take a radiant pipe either out of iron or copper, depending on what you have most of. And we just want one single radiant pipe. One pipe should be enough in order to keep this steam turbine cool. If it is not enough, you might have to add more of the radiant pipes or maybe even temp shift plates. But there we go, that's basically it. After that, you would want to close this off and you can take apart your liquid lock and everything should be fine. Now, of course, I haven't hooked this up to the power, but you can see I have the same exact design right here. It's already running and this is the water source that I'm cooling down at the moment. I set the liquid thermo sensor to 70 degrees. Right now we are at about 73 degrees and we can see the temperature is also raising right here. As soon as we hit above 70 degrees, the sensor is going to turn on the aqua tuner cooling down my liquid. And you can see how it flows. It's just going back here and it's using this little slot here in order to keep the steam turbine cool going back into my main pool. Now this is what I usually recommend you to do. Collect your water either in a physical tank like this or you can also do it in a reservoir but this way if you combine all the packets they are gonna have the same temperature. So all the packets that are coming out here have a similar temperature and this is not gonna confuse the aqua tuners too much. So that's definitely a worthwhile trick. Collect your water somewhere before you send them to the aqua tuners so they equalize their temperatures. All right, cool. With that out of the way, I'm gonna show you the design with three aqua tuners daisy chained. And if we have a look at the piping, you can see it is a little more complex and that has a very good reason. You have to believe me, if you daisy chain aqua tuners, you need two bridges and I'm gonna explain you exactly why. And I think that's where most people fail. So let me go ahead and prepare the exact same thing here. We're just gonna start with a vacuumed out room. Despite the fact that the daisy chain is more complicated, I'm not gonna go into as much detail. So I already prepared the rooms. We are gonna take our heavy watt chomp plates and do the same system as before in order to keep the heat of the steam in the room. This time around we're gonna take three aqua tuners but you could just uh, keep on going if you want to do an enormous amount of cooling but usually you know in order to cool water for instance three aqua tuners are a good thing in order to cool oil that you have as a coolant in your refinery that works as well. But let's get first the essentials out of the way. We want thermal pipe sensors in front of each aqua tuner. Of course, we also want to hook that up with the respective automation wire and we want to give those guys enough power to function. On the top, obviously, we're going to have our two steam engines and they are also going to feed the power to my system, which is once again going to be represented by a smart battery there. Next up, we want to do the simple piping igneous rock insulated. So from the first sensor inside of the aqua tuner, let's assume the liquid was hot enough. So it goes through the aqua tuner. It goes then to the next sensor, to the next aqua tuner. Once again, it is too hot, goes to the next sensor, to the next aqua tuner. And then finally it exits at this point. Now, if that happens, it is safe to assume that the liquid still potentially is too hot because all of these sensors, of course, are going to be set to the same temperature. Let's actually do the example with cooling down oil in a refinery. So I'm going to go send a green signal and the liquid through the aqua tuner if the temperature is above 80 degrees. I want to copy that over for each of the sensors. If we are coming out of this aqua tuner, the liquid is still potentially too hot. So what we want to do is send it back to the first sensor. That is going to be our first loop. However, now at any point, if the liquid is cold enough, we can exit to the top here. So we're going to bypass the aqua tuner just like that. 
Since we are daisy chaining our aqua tuners, it is not possible. Well, it is possible, but you should not connect them like so. And even one single bridge is not going to be enough. And I'm going to show you just why that is. Let's say we put our bridges like so and just connected this like so. Then it seems that could work. I mean, the water is leaving the aqua tuner, bypassing it, and it's just uh, continuing the loop going back. However, unfortunately, that's not what's happening. What's happening is that the liquid is already cold enough. It's going right here and then it's going to go into the next aqua tuner. And that's where most of the designs fail that are daisy chained. Instead, what we want to do is use two bridges like so right above each other. This is why I made the steam room one higher. The bypass from the first aqua tuner goes into this bridge, then into that bridge, and then it's going to leave the loop. The bypass from the second aqua tuner is going to go into the top bridge and then it's going to go down. And this way we prevent any backflow from happening. So no packet that is already cold enough is going to go back into an aqua tuner. It's then going to use this line in order to exit. And the same thing with the third aqua tuner. We want to use the second bridge and connect the second bridge to the first bridge of this set, this bridge set, and then we are done. All the output slots are combined again. What I then want to make sure is that we have enough cooling for our steam turbines and we are going to do it like so with a bunch of radiant pipes. Now I made the experience that with three aqua tuners the steam turbines are going to overheat if you don't use enough pipes. So I'm going to use radiant pipes all the way up to the center of the next steam turbine. We can even save a little bit on space by actually using the bridges as our exit slots. This way we can lead the output of the steam turbine on one side and also onto the other side and kind of have an even distribution of heat going on. We could then lead the output slot into a refinery for instance or we could cool down a pool of water that we use in order to cool down other stuff. That is of course all up to you. What I've done on this side is add a refinery. The way I'm feeding the system is you can see we have the coolant inside of the refinery at the moment and I made sure that I have enough coolant in here so that we can do at least two crafts every time. The heated up liquid from the refinery is going to exit right here and it's going to not have priority. So that means hot oil is going to enter the loop right here. It's going to be cooled down. If it is already cool enough, it's going to go back up into the refinery. However, if it goes through all of the aqua tuners, that means it's potentially still too hot. And then it's going to join the loop again. And we want to make sure that this liquid has the priority from the last aqua tuner and not from the refinery. So if we just go ahead and spawn a duplicate right here, Max should go ahead and actually take care of the metal refinery and we should be seeing the hot liquid exiting right here. Oh no, Max, are you freaking serious? <sighs> there we go. And you can see the oil is at 870 degrees. We set the thermal sensors to 80 degrees. So there should be a lot of cooling happening before it's going back into the refinery. In the meantime, Max is crafting the second craft and we can see stuff is now going through the aqua tuners whenever it is too hot. So there you go. Now you can see the loop is going on. As long as it is still above the 80 degrees, it's not going to exit this loop. However, right here, we just reached below 80 degrees and therefore it's going to exit the loop. This also means new liquid that we have to cool down can enter the loop and the rest is just going to get out here and it's going to join our refinery again because all of that is below 80 degrees. Well, it's actually heating up a little bit because of the steam engines, but that is something you could counteract by lowering the sensors even more. So we are still cooling things down. Now more stuff can exit the loop and you can see everything can run smoothly because we have all of these bridges and it's never going to backlog. So it shouldn't fail. You shouldn't experience any pipes that break down because of that. And that is usually a big problem. Pretty cool. Now this tutorial was specifically about the aqua tuners and the steam turbines. However, there are many possibilities to cool things down or utilize the heat of a steam room. We uh, wouldn't even need the thermal aqua tuners in this case. What you could do instead of having all of these aqua tuners, I mean, that's just a representation. You could just lead the liquid through the steam room without anything in there, just the steam and have radiant pipes in order to cool down the oil in the pipes to a certain temperature. I mean, it could be 200 degrees or whatever. And then you're going to use the steam turbines to extract the heat. But since this tutorial was about the aqua tuners, I think that was the biggest issue most of the people had is to actually get those working without the pipes breaking, without any of the loop actually getting stuck somewhere. 
So I really hope that was actually what you were asking for. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.